On October 2019, I set out to challenge myself and push my game development skills into new territory. Doing a game dev challenge in October has started to become a tradition for me over the last couple of years. The inspiration came last year when everyone was participating in Inktober, and as I was delving deeper into game development, I decided I didn't want to exercise my drawing skills, I wanted to practice my game development skills. Admittedly, last year's challenge for myself was a bit more ambitious. Last year I decided to create a new prototype based off a classic game every single day. I got to about 20 and then my computer got a little weird on me and I wasn't able to get to 31 so I, I always really felt bad for not completing my 31 prototypes. So this year I wanted to do something a little bit similar and challenge myself again. On October 1st I even created a prototype about a jellyfish that could shoot like a machine gun. But it immediately felt like I was rehashing the same ideas. It felt like I was just repeating myself again. So on October 2nd, I decided to switch things up a bit. Since the majority of my games have been pixel art or 2D games, I really wanted to learn how to develop in 3D. One of the biggest things that has held me back from making 3D games is my total lack of 3D modeling ability. So instead of creating 3D games every day, I decided to focus on a single skill, 3D modeling. I've had a little bit of experience using ProBuilder in the past. For those of you who don't know, ProBuilder is a built-in tool that helps you create simple 3D models inside of Unity uh, without the need of a third-party program. It's usually used to block out levels or to create simplified collisions for levels. I've always felt that it was more robust and that it had more potential. I also like the idea of building models inside of Unity to have a more organic workflow. An all-in-one game making environment just sounds cool to me. And I gotta say that after a month of using ProBuilder, I'm pretty impressed with it. And I'm pretty happy with the way things turned out. So as of recording this video, it's currently October 28th. And I have about 18 character models that I've done. And, and I'm pretty happy with that, actually. I've learned a lot from making these 18 models. And I feel like I've built up my 3D muscle quite a bit. There are a few key lessons that I've learned in particular that I thought I'd share with you all. So in my first few characters, I made a huge mistake. I started to notice that my characters were feeling a little bit bland and generic um, and I quickly realized it was because I had decided to just go straight into modeling without any real plan. Other characters that I had done in the past, because I, I had done other characters in the past with ProBuilder, um, but they were all based on drawings, either designs I had done or designs from artists that I followed on Instagram. Nuxter art in particular had some really good character designs and these were some of my favorites to convert into 3D. The designs were simple and powerful and translated easily into a 3D game environment. It wasn't until about my third character in my October challenge that I really started to draw the characters in advance and I immediately started to notice a difference. So I started to make a list of 31 characters I wanted to make, all Halloween themed of course. Then I took a day or two to design them all on paper. I did a few quick sketches um, and this really paid off in the end. Being able to have a blueprint to go off of made things a lot easier and designing the characters with ProBuilder in mind also really helped a lot. When I was drawing the characters I did have ProBuilder in mind I try to make them out of very simple 3D shapes so that I wouldn't have such a hard time creating them in Unity. One of the other big lessons I learned was to always add color grading in post-processing. This is a really simple thing to overlook um, and it's also really easy to implement using Unity. So I thought I'd mention it here. Um, also combining that with lighting makes for a very powerful and polished look at the end. Simply changing the color grading to aces gives it a more filmic look 
and it's going to have your colors and your lighting look a lot better. Another simple thing to do is add ambient occlusion, which is basically contact shadows. This makes everything look a little bit more solid and grounded in reality. Of course, bloom and depth of field are two cool things to play around with, but they can easily get out of hand and people tend to overuse these. Particle effects were also a big lesson. I pretty much learned how to use particle effects while creating these models because oftentimes I needed the characters to have fire or smoke or some kind of effect that would really add to the character. Particle effects, although it seems like a daunting thing, are actually made really easy in Unity. It's just a few sliders you gotta move up and down, um, and simple like blob effects that you can draw using Photoshop. It's actually not as hard as you might think. Creating environments for the characters was also very important, although sometimes the environment could just be a simple solid color. I hate to see people use the default skybox in Unity when it's really easy to create a skybox yourself or just make it a solid color. Creating an environment is also not too difficult. You just add a texture to the ground and create a few simple props in the background and you're pretty much done. Uh, the props in the background don't even have to be that detailed because they're not the main focus. Um, you don't want to make them that detailed anyways because then they're going to take focus away from the character which is the centerpiece. Another thing that I learned while making this was a, about a record tool inside of Unity. This is another preview package um, that in Unity I'm using 2018.3 so if you're using something newer it'll definitely be in there. It's a simple recording tool that just lets you record things without hitches. What I was doing before was I was using the Max built-in QuickTime screen recorder which was slowing down my computer and what I was ending up recording was like really glitchy and the frame rate was really low and it really wasn't displaying my thing as best as I wanted them to. So having this built-in Unity recorder has been like a lifesaver. It's been really, really, really cool. I recommend it to anyone. So guys, I think I'm going to end that video here. It's getting a little bit long. Um, but you might be wondering, what am I going to do with uh, all of these new characters that I've created and uh, all these environments that I've made? Um, since I already have them all done, I've decided that I might put them out uh, as an asset pack on the asset store. And I also want to make an example game uh, to go along with it. So a lot of the footage that I've shown on here, if you see a little cat shooting around, um, that's already me using those assets um, in a little video game. So I think I'll include that little mini game with the asset pack as sort of like a starter kit. Um, to give you an idea of how you would use these assets in a game. Um, and also because this week's weekly game jam theme is Taco Cat, I think I'll be making that example game um, with that theme in mind and submit it as a preview of what you can get with these assets. Um, so if you like this video, I'm hoping to make more of these, uh, some devlogs, some tutorials, so if you like it, please hit like, hit subscribe, look out for my weekly game jam, Taco Cat game.